TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. Right behind me, you see it. Little warning screen just in case. Probably not that serious, but, you know, I like to leave them in case. Twitch.com, obviously, you can catch any live streams, previous lives, and get ready for future lives, man. The username's right there on the bottom. You see it. Uh, we also got Patreon, where we post five days a week. That's stuff we cannot watch on YouTube. Like, the good sitcom UK shows and things of that nature. This is Window. Salute to Window, man. Still making it happen out here. I seen you went to America. Yeah, man, you got to come to the rack, man. Come on, man. When I visit, when I go back to the crib, you can come, man. Come slide with me. This is Divided Dover, Britain's Migrant Boat Crisis Town. Okay. Oh, oh. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. Dang! Hold on. Danger of death? <laughs> I never see this side like this. Beyond this point, you are at risk of being cut off by the tide and potential cliff falls. Know your limits. I wouldn't even try it. No is my limit. N O. On the very southeastern tip of Britain sits the famous port town of Dover. Only 21 miles from the coast of France, the white cliffs of this area used to be a symbol of home for returning Brits. Now they are a symbol of hope for the thousands of migrants who weekly attempt the channel crossing across these dangerous waters in search of a new life in ill-equipped small dinghies. Most migrants are met by British authorities at sea and escorted to shore. So really? make it without being detected and arrive on the beaches close to Dover, just like this one I'm on now. And unfortunately, some die at sea, drowning in the perilous waters. Much has been documented. But imagine what the migrants are going through in their home country to want to come to such a great place such as the UK to take that risk. You know what I'm saying? They got to be going through some tragedy. Some We know it's in the papers. We see it every day about the migrant crisis here in the UK. It's a very divisive issue, both in wider society and even in the comments to this channel. But what do the locals here in Dover think about their town at the centre of the migrant crisis in 2024? What's it like to live in Dover and what do they think about the small boat arrivals? Join me as I explore Dover, England's border frontier at the centre of the small boat arrivals migrant crisis. I'm making a YouTube video about Dover. Do you want to chat to me? Not really. Not really. Just Dover's as much. A just as much as I don't want to buy an Armani T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Dover's yeah. a shithole. Why do you say that, mate? Full of fucking foreigners. Yeah. Well, obviously it's got There's a reputation no, nationwide. There's little gangs. There's little gangs in the park in that. Yeah. Like proper gangs. They cause trouble. Yeah. There's like 30 of them. Yeah. They're, they're robbing people. They're beating up people. Really? Yeah. So it's unsafe for. Yeah, People who are a bit vulnerable to wander around. Penchester, you need to stay away from that. Okay. Don't go there at night filming. Yep. Serious, because you'll get robbed. Okay, mate. That's Appreciate the, the advice. So you're visiting from Australia? Yeah. Yeah. And what brought you? What is this in the background? To Dover. Why not? Why not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's iconic. For sure. So here's me looking to meet locals in Dover and I met an Australian. <laughs> so I'm shooting a bit far wide of the target at the moment, yeah. Oh, yes, but look how well you've done with us. Yeah. How well have you done? So I've just bumped into this chap who is a born and bred local from Dover. Damn right. How's the town doing these days? Fantastic. It's up and coming. It's a vibe. Um, could be a little bit better, but uh, like I say, local boy, born and bred. I'll stick by this town and I'll uh, always... <laughs> Well, the first dude that was talking to him, there's gangs everywhere, though. You know what I'm saying? Any gang that's here, like... 
it's a hard, it's a it's a tough conversation. Gangs like I know a lot of migrants come because and they get join gangs or they make their own gang probably because they feel like like outcasts and they need to protect themselves from the locals. That that's the truth about it. Like that that's what it is. Um, and it, it's an it's an unfortunate situation. It's unfortunate on two two aspects that they're not welcomed with open arms and they have to resort to that and it's also unfortunate that the locals feel like the government puts the migrants first before the needs of the the locals and you know what i'm saying it's just a it's a it's a never ending it's a it's a vicious cycle that's the word i'm looking for it's a vicious cycle shout loud about it obviously fault. a lot of the people that watch this channel the first thing that comes to mind when i think of dover these days is the small boat migrant arrival crisis people could call that in some ways you know number and you gotta be there's there's there, let's not act like there's not gangs already in dover no matter how big or small they were and don't act like they're not recruiting these people coming off of these oh you need some money you need this you need that do this for me do that for me like come on I, that was my statement for the first day. All right. There's over a thousand every week arriving. Yeah. Does that affect life in Dover? What, what do the born and bred locals think about the I boat crisis? It's everywhere. So, but, but personally, Facts. it doesn't, we don't see it. You know, I know it's bad and it, it, it doesn't affect us locals as such because it's a bit more off the chain, but it's, it's there, put it out there because it's all over the news and stuff, but as a, as a local myself, it's not really affecting us. It's got a bit of a reputation maybe 30 years ago of a bit of a rough town, but I had heard that there's been quite a bit of like regeneration, building of a shopping area just down there. Yeah. Like, have things improved, quality of life in the town last few years? I think what they're doing is local businesses are, are struggling a little bit more. Uh, and the bigger franchises are now being put into the new bills, like you say, which is fantastic. But unfortunately, the, the smaller part of Dover, that, as in the high streets, dying, I would say. And uh, unfortunately, that bit is uh, a little bit of a closure. It's a good place to be. It's up and coming. Best return on investments. Yeah. Property still decent. I, I like how Dover is set up. I'm not going to lie. I like how it's like, it got some nice little architecture. It got some up. It got some up to date stuff as well, and then it got all these little mama pop little areas. Like this is, it looked decent. Absolutely. Price to buy these days, Randy? It's it's the best place in Kent, I would say. It's the cheapest prices and still gets a good rent. So why would you not want to live here? Dover has gone down, uh, disgrace because you've got foreigners come out over channel over here and come over here, Mr. Elsa. There's always going to be a clear contrast between older generation and the young generation i think a lot of the young generation who got stuff going on for themselves is not gonna care older generation just because they've been there for so long you know they're gonna they're gonna have a problem with it because they seeing stuff closed down they seeing they seeing this and that and it's just not like the olden days and we're older and we're not accepting too much change um and then the younger people that are that are broke and not doing nothing with their lives they got somebody to scapegoat on having no job and no opportunity and no housing benefit. You know, that's how I be seeing it. Like, I'm being candid with you. This is how I be seeing when I be watching this. Like, that, that, that's the general... That's the general... That's the general, uh, like, feeling of who's saying what. <laughs> um, keep them um, free... Um Free treatment, we got to pay for it. And shop is closing down because it's too much rent yeah. and business rates. So is it is retail really difficult on the high street as well with rates? Yeah. That got nothing to do with nobody though. That's just, that's, it's 2024, inflation's crazy. Rent, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think about how the, the migrants have been dealt with coming over in the small boats? Um, if I come over here, sit them back up. Uh, get them out of the country straight away. It's too many people and we can't hold them. Yeah, so I looked at the statistics just to... Yeah, I will agree, like, overpopulation is a thing, but... Last week, and there were over a thousand <laughs> um, small boat arrivals just in this Dover area alone. Yeah. Yeah, but the numbers are far higher, like, in, in other periods, you know, like, it can be over 2,000 a month, something... A week, sorry. There's about a thousand on Sunday coming Really? 
just in one day? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thousand and do you, does day. that affect the town centre? Like, do, do you see them coming into the town centre? Or have they just whisked away? Uh, my thing is, uh, put people off. What do you think about Points another government well. that might be on its way out, <coughs> but they had this plan to send everyone to Rwanda, or at least put that as a deterrent for people coming over the channel? What do you think about, uh, about I, that policy? I think um, it won't change. I can't get bloody place. Why? Because you let those foreigners come over here of our, our houses. England will give you money, may give you house, fresh clothes. Sir, you're about 50, 60 years old. What were you doing before they were coming? That, see, and that'd be my question. Like, what were you doing with your life before they were coming then? If by right now you can't get a house. Well, so what was you doing all this past time though? You see what I'm saying? Now we get there's a scapegoat. There's an excuse. I mean, and the coverage fee treatment. And everything. I could be yeah. wrong, but, but I'm just. He, and don't pay. Thinking out loud, really. I said, you come over England, England will look after you, 100%. So you think that people come now because they think that they're <laughs> going to get handed out some Yeah, and out. Dave is a bit quiet, as in for like business and trade and that. Um, a lot of people come through when it's um, sunny, they go down the beach and enjoy themselves down the beach. Quite a few foreigners come off the big boats and there. Um, locals walk past, they say hi, and everyone's quite happy. Yeah. We need more people spending to keep the economy going. How about in terms of like crime and safety and things like that? We and that's a smart outtake. The, the main, the businesses on the high street aren't busting because there's no. Nobody's spending that. It's more of logical thought. Seeing people run past, being chased by... What about in terms of, like, crime and safety and things like that? We've seen people run past, being chased by the police. We've held someone down there when he swung at a lady. He was uh, obviously either mentally unstable or something like that, or under the influence of drugs, Elka, we don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's always a police vehicle. So that needs sorting out, and there's always a few drunks over in the square, which is not good no. for tourism or anyone or families walking past. Yeah, that's I'd everywhere. Say, eradicate that, get it sorted out, get them indoors, get them dried out or whatever. Okay, Make yeah. the place nice and happy for everyone and for their families. Yeah. And old people, like myself. It's a funny old place, Dover. It's not what I expected. I was told from people I know that have passed through Dover, sometimes stayed the night before a channel crossing, that it was a rough town. But maybe that's how it was 20 or 30 years ago. A lot of the people I've met have been quite positive, but it's it's a mix really. Like there's some beautiful architecture, there's you know the castle up there, the beautiful white cliffs. It's a mixed bag, Dover. And I'm still trying to work it out. So what, what's Dover like these days, 2024? Uh, Dover's really nice, actually. It's uh, changing. Uh, they're fixing up the, the town really good, actually. Yeah, a bit of investment, a yes. bit of regeneration. It's, it's got, a, got a reputation of being a little bit of a rough place, like 30 years ago or so. Yes, even well, 15 years ago. Yeah. yeah it's really changing. It's for the okay, best. So Dover's always been a rough place. And see, see, this man's outlook is, oh, it's changing for the best. Everybody depending on their situation personally is going to have a different opinion so a lot of my viewers well, when they think of Dover these days they probably think of like the small boat arrivals crisis and things like that yeah. you work on the ships like does that affect life coming and going um, oh, ac actually, across actually, the English Channel unfortunately the immigrants you know they're trying to fight for for survival and they lose their lives some, some of them lose their lives on the on the channel there. So you were living in London? Right. Now, yeah. And you've recently moved here to Dover? Here for now, uh, four weeks. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you've been here four weeks. Yeah. How's Dover been in the four weeks you've been here? Very nice, peaceful people. Seems yeah. so. Yeah, but London is no fucking bastard, you know, when you oh, talk on the phone, they take the phone and run away. Yeah, it's a crazy place, yeah. But here I have a lot of um, the refugees. They're living under the tree, eating the... But they really? But they, they are not this country people. No. They are... They come on the boats and... Boats, different, different nation, different, different... Yeah, but I am also same coming boat man. You know? I am coming from Sri Lanka. From Sri Lanka? Yeah. I would love to go to Sri Lanka one yeah, day. Yeah, very nice country. Yeah. Peaceful. Yeah. Very peaceful Buddhist country. How long ago? Like, how old were you when you arrived? How many uh, years ago? Uh, maybe I've been now here this 30 years. Been this country 30 oh, yeah, years. 30. Yeah. Before I working from the council. 
in London. London, Lambeth County. Lambeth, yeah. 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 So you come for the peaceful life yeah, here yeah, in Dover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Very nice. Very nice. My friend, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you very yeah. much. God bless you. Hallelujah. So why did you come to Dover? No, I didn't choose to come to Dover. They bring me here. Yeah. Who who brought you here? The authorities? Yeah, the authorities. Okay. Yeah. So what country are you originally from? Uh, South Sudan. South Sudan? Yes. Yeah. And what type of journey did you take to get here? Through France. Yeah. Through France? Yeah. So did, did you come over from Calais yes. to Dover, yeah. yeah. And how, how did you cross? Through, uh, it's called a dinghy, yeah. You came on a dinghy? Yeah. Oh, my friend, yeah. yeah. Was it was it dangerous? Was it yeah. scary? Yeah, it's scary, yeah. Dangerous. Yeah. How long does the crossing take? It's about 21 miles, but how long does it take? Uh, like, uh, the distance? Um, no, hours? the time. The, the time, yeah. About four, five hours. Yeah. Hey, voila, that's, that's, that's peak. Four, five hours? Yeah, three hours. And did you land close to Dover? No, you, you don't land. The government, you meet the authorities and then they bring you here. They intercept you and bring you to shore? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and how have the local people in Dover treated you as a migrant? No, we don't see any different here. They, they treat us like even like all the people, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I have a question that I've been really wishing to ask a migrant in your position. Yeah. Um, so, like you pass through countries like Germany and France, yeah. yeah? And why did you want to come all the way to England? The folks next door have been going at it like what? Congratulations on this, man. Congratulations. I'll step up. Life. Art to kindly mask. It's got list. Gotta pay the bills. Moses. I get it, window. Earphones. You know, I've never got offered one of these. That's crazy. I ain't hating. I'm just, you know, saying. For ten percent off your purchases. So, like, you pass through countries like Germany and France, yeah. yeah. And why did you want to come all the way to England? It's a genuine question. Like, what is attractive about England? You know, most of people, they choose England because of English, you know, language. So do you speak English in South Sudan? Yeah. You already spoke English? Yeah. So do, does that mean that you... That makes sense. That makes sense. I would want to go somewhere where I'm comfortable with the language so I can get around freely and not be confused. Do you think your opportunities are better in English because of even, the language? And even I see the different people here because maybe in Europe is... Maybe there's a little racist, I see, uh, I, in my opinion. Yeah. 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 That is all. That makes perfect sense. That makes sense. I don't know if what he's saying is true because I've never been there, but just the, the melting pot of, the, of England is, is more attractive. Just like the melting pot of certain cities in America, like it's, 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 it's more attractive. Here they treat you. So, so you think that, like in in other countries, people are more racist towards yeah, people circus? in your position. Yeah. But you hear you less so. Yeah. 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 You live. You have peace. They don't tell you anything. They are nice. There is no racist. No bad looks. How how long since you saw your family? Two years. Really? Yeah. 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 That must be sad. Yeah. Yes. yes yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. How long in total from South Sudan? to the UK, how much time? It's different from person to another, you know? Yeah. Maybe for me, about two years something, but... Two years yeah. from South Sudan to UK? Yeah, but it's different from person to another. Of Some, course. Some spend even four years, five years, three years, one. Wait, what? It took you two years? Yeah, even five months. It depends on the luck, you know? Yeah. Money. Oh my God, that's a tragic route. Yeah. It's on like they ask we said all is in, in God's hand yeah of yeah, course some yeah some are and some are not yeah. and even some they don't arrive even and they don't go back they die on the road you know? yeah yeah that is all is that quite um, frequent that people die on the crossing yeah yeah Absolutely. what was what was the um, most dangerous or scary thing that happened to you on your entire journey from Sudan South Sudan to UK a lot of things, you know, like even in Arab country, North African, they treat you badly, but 
no problem now we arrived everything is okay yeah you must have been very relieved when yeah, yeah. when you arrived on uk yeah, yeah. land yeah okay that's really interesting to talk to you like i really appreciate hearing your side of the story because it's a very divisive issue um in this country migration and a lot of people don't meet the people that have been through the journey that you've been through. Yeah. So I appreciate the time that you're taking talking to me. Yeah, he's been through a crazy journey to get here. You know, South Sudan is, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I understand why bro running. He's trying to get out of there. Bro just want to live peaceful. He just want to live with no threats above, no threat of life. No, You know what I'm saying? Like, got to get some money and send it back to his fam. Like, I get it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, my friend. Yeah. It's hard for me to. Don't get me wrong. I'm, not, I'm sure there's some people that come over and just get on badness. Imagine on such a calm day in the port of Dover here when the water is still like a mill pond. What the small boat arrivals, the migrants, what they must have been through on their journey to get here. Not just across the English Channel, but from their original destination. This is very much the promised land which they must have dreamt of at the start of their journey. And I understand that there are arguments, both sides of the coin with this. I understand that there are sides of the argument that are sympathetic towards the humanitarian plight. And then there are other arguments where people say that they think that a lot of people are taking advantage of the British hospitality. To me, like my American point of view for like people coming into America is let them in. Let them in. I got my own motion. It's not going to stop there. You know what I'm saying? Us us lighting somebody else's hope lantern is not going to take anything from our what we got going on. It's, 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 it's not going to take anything away from our country. So it's like, go ahead, man. You want to come through? You want to find a better way? We advertise it. We advertise it to the world. We're the best. We're the best. It's a, it's a melting pot. You can have a career, the American dream. So, hey, with that being said, come through. You know what I'm saying? If stuff is allotted to you more so than us, and we had to hustle and grind through the mud, hey, more power to you. I'm not. I don't. It ain't. I'm not. I can't hate the player. I can hate the game, but never the player. Y'all just playing the, the cards that's dealt to y'all. What I got an attitude to chill for, y'all. Hey, this stuff is there for y'all, and y'all taking it. And y'all coming out of a country, like y'all coming out of a place that's war torn. Like it's, it's you're probably living in something crazy, or if you even like you, you, you're coming from something that's that we can't even relate to. That's the best I'm gonna say to. And most of the people that complain are people that are down bad, but had every afforded thing placed in their route and they just did something else you decided to get drunk you decided to be on 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 benefits you decided to do, do drugs you decided to drop out of school you decided now you got a problem with somebody else i'm not saying all cases is like that but like a lot of the time man it's an incredibly complicated issue but what i found here in dover itself is that it's not quite what I expected. It's actually a pretty pleasant little town. It's certainly not as rough and ready as I was led to believe that it is. And that the people for the most part seem pretty happy. And although the drama unfolds with the small boats constantly arriving, especially what you would call crossing season here in summer, daily, thousands of people at times, but it doesn't really seem to affect the people in the town over there. Uh, he's on a pier. You know what that I just discovered? Like, I don't even like piers like that. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's a Florida thing. Like, y'all, y'all, it's too deep into the ocean. It's just like, be uncomfortable. Like, oh my God. Yeah, they, they just go about their lives and the issues of migration, they, they spread all across Britain. I presume that that rescue boat will have been used many times and will be used many more times still to go and rescue and assist migrants who come to trouble or arrive in the waters here around Dover. Many, let's not forget many of these migrants, 
I drown him. And let me clarify. My rant, the last rant that I just went on right now, like a, a few seconds ago, that was about America. I, I, I don't know if we are clear on that. I don't. I can't speak for what's going on there. I don't know. I'm talking about America. And when I said benefits, I meant Section 8. I couldn't think of the word. The waters, because the vessels, the dinghies, the small boats that they arrive in, they're just not suitable for crossing the open body of water. A couple of years ago, I used this YouTube channel, which was very different back then to what it is now, to raise some funds for the RNLI, who I think do a fantastic job of saving lives at sea around Britain. Especially considering the fact that many of the people that go out to sea and save lives are volunteers. And not many, but a few people kicked off. They said that I shouldn't be raising money for a charity that goes out and brings and assists migrants to shore when they're making the crossing here to Britain. But what else are the RNLI supposed to do? Their mission is to protect lives at sea. I think the answer to these problems doesn't lie with the people that go out to sea to save the migrants. It, it lies in the corridors of power. But likewise, I understand the frustration of a large portion of the British public. The quality of life in this country seems to be going downhill for those that aren't rich, aren't wealthy. And a lot of fingers can understandably be pointed at a huge influx of migration when there aren't even enough services for people that are born and bred in this country. So I understand both sides of the argument, folks. Obviously, everybody that watches this will have an opinion, and I'd love you to write in the comments below what you think about all this. Everyone's entitled to- Well, Wendell, i will just do a reaction and <laughs> tell you about it. Their opinion. What do you think should be done? What do you think of the solutions? Like I said, I can't speak too much on the UK. I'm not there, so I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't live every day and feel anything. You know what I'm saying? But here it's like, America is so good. It's America is so big, like, I, and I'm in Florida currently. And before I was in Chicago, which is a, a safe haven or whatever, like, they send people there. So it's like, Chicago's a melting pot. So I never really was like, oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was like, that's what's up. Wit nice to meet you. Which side of the fence do you sit on and what are your recommendations going forward? So what's life like in Dover in 2024? Uh, it's gone downhill a lot since, since I was a kid. There's just nothing, no shops, nothing for anyone to do in the town. And I, I mean, years ago there was shops, you could go anywhere, you didn't have to go out of town for anything, but now you have to, so... Yeah, so the high street retail the high street stuff has big stuff. retail yeah. has gone down. I think a lot of it happened since we've been in lockdown, where everyone done anything online. Yeah. I mean, banks are closing. Lockdown, COVID made a lot of things happen for local businesses. They, that online shopping, through the roof. And people still on that. Like, I ain't got to go nowhere. But it almost killed the movie industry. Like, man, for what? Netflix. In a, I mean, my bank's closed. I've been with since not since I left school. And that's closed. So, you know, and old people think, well, what am I going to do? How am I going to, you know, do yeah. I transfer money to another bank? And then that closes. It's going to be like that now. How about safety? Like, um, wandering the streets, going to be oh, no. what shops are left? How do you feel about that? Um... During the day, you were out. But I wouldn't come out at night. Wouldn't come out at night because you don't know what's going to happen. Who yeah. knows about? Yeah. Once I go home, I see it shut the door. Yeah. I don't venture out. But years ago, we never thought. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh. Anything of it. Yeah, and you're born and bred in Dover. Oh God, yeah. 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 So, so a lot of people that watch my channel when they think of Dover, like around the country, yeah. people think of like the small boat arrivals. Uh, crisis with the migrants. Bad, yeah. how, how does that affect locals here in Dover? Well, we don't like it much. You know, as I say, if when they first started coming out, they was allowed in the town. You just didn't feel didn't feel comfortable. If you know what I mean, you know. And even now, you sort of look at people and you think, well, have they just landed or something like that? You just don't know. Yeah. You know. It's... Have you noticed the numbers of migrants around the town grow over years? Not so much in the town. Not now, because obviously they're taken to all these centres, yeah. but um, 
you, you meet the odd couple that I suppose that do escape and you know you, you just look at them a little bit and you think oh, oh some sleeping rough in shop doorways yeah. as well. oh, yeah. we you get a lot of that you just don't know who to trust but, I mean the only thing that seems to survive in Dover are nail bars and and Men, kebab shops, kebab uh, shops, and men's hairdressers. Yeah, and yeah. there are a lot of foreign shops. Yeah, yeah. You can You're gonna always need to get your nails done, and you're gonna always need a haircut at the end of the day. They've all opened up in the town, which doesn't interest well, me. They are all foreign people that are working yeah. in them. Aren't yeah. They? Before me lies one of the most symbolic British images, an upside down shopping trolley <laughs> in a canal or river. Uh, I hope to see one when I go to the UK, man. Would you chat to me for 20 seconds about what life's like in Dover? Yeah, I'm liking it over, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so many years. How many years have you been here? Yeah, me? Yeah. 20 years old. Tw since you were 20? Yeah. Yeah, sweet. And how old are you now? How would I meet? They're right now. Yeah. 26 and this year 27. I don't know. Oh my God. Sir, I'm glad you're here, man. Wherever you came from, they was taking a toll on you, boy. That, 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 that. Wherever you was at, aged you. I'm glad you're here now, living your best life. The Dover is good, but so many people is here the bad. Drinking alcohol, okay. doing some problems, you know. So take, there are some social problems. Take, take, no, 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 the social. Taking the snake. Yeah, and smoking beef. narcotics and, and alcohol. Uh, and, 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 people maybe and, name and I'm not like it, though. Okay. Not narcotic, you understand? Say, say that again, uh, sorry. Maybe alcohol, yeah? Yeah. Uh, but not uh, narcotic, not. Yeah, just, just beer. Yeah, I understand, mate. I'm just, look at it here. You're, like, just, you're just having, oh, you're on energy energy drink, yeah. You're an energy drink. Energy. I mean, You're just on a beer, yeah? Me beer now. Yeah, yeah sure, yeah. Not narcotic, not drunk. No, ju just drinking and just yeah. energy drink. I used to drink energy drinks, man. I, like, not really, but like, like, like three, four months ago, like, I had a, a stint on energy drinks, but they, them is terrible for you, boy. Like, it makes you think you really need them more. The more you're on them, the more you need them. But once you like stop taking energy drinks, you'd be cool. Like you, you don't even stop putting terrible stuff in your body that you don't need, like food-wise, and you won't need to be energized. And you know what I'm saying? Body will, body will process your good foods that you put in there and make them into great energy. So, it's my. I'm, I'm from Rio. I'm from. This my guys. Yeah. He's from Russia. He's from Russia, yeah. 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 I'm European guys. I'm from Slovakia. You're from Slovakia? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So from England, the Slovakia, the game the other day. Yeah. yeah oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah I was you do what I'm sorry. <laughs> you deserve to I win. Was, I was <laughs> you deserve I was, to I win. Was betting, I was betting for for England once. Yeah. And the England winning two one. Yeah, at the <laughs> very, very last yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah. In the 90, yeah, 90, yeah. 95 minutes, they're giving the goals. Yeah. How, how long have you been here for, since you left Russia? How long in the UK? Eight years. Eight years. What well, I thought uh, Del Boy was going to hop out of here. There's another wonderful British image of Reliant Robin going down a high street. Although I think things on the high street here in Britain have changed a fair bit since that Reliant Robin came off the factory line. You can see all these closed shops around. Actually, I'm in one of the best bits at the moment, but if you just come over the road here, closed shops, pound shops, Turkish barbers, at least Boots is still open for now. What was that? Oh, grocery store? This is a hotel? Never. Dover's oldest inn isn't faring too well. Change those to apartments. Dover kebab. I like that. Made me chuckle. I have a question oh, for you folks. Now, like I, misters if it's hot. Personally, no, 
several people that voted for Brexit because they thought that it would solve the influx of migration to the country. Well, what we've seen since Brexit and what we can see clearly here in Dover Didn't is not. that that isn't the case. So what do you think, folks? Do you think that you were sold a lie by Nigel Farage and his Brexit bus? Or do you think that it'll still take many years to solve those issues? How's Dover these days? It's Simple. Why do you say that? Huh? Why do you say that? Everything's dirty. Yeah. All the girls are dead. <laughs> What's your YouTube channel? It's called Wendell. Huh? Wendell. Yeah. Well, look at... Bro, he's... Look at out. Yeah, you make money off this. Isn't it? Sometimes. Well, it's Trixie, round biz to the cut. You know who it is. You want to come... <laughs> To Dover, give yourself. us a little text message. Make sure you send our Instagram. <laughs> and yeah. It, yeah, what's your Instagram for all the ladies? What's my Instagram? Triggs Trap. <laughs> Triggs Trap. T R I G G Z. Bro, don't know how to spell his name. Yeah, Dover down bad. Hey, you don't know how to spell your name. It's down bad out there. I didn't traps. Traps. Now I was gonna film my grand conclusion to this video, walking along the seafront here, and with the white cliffs in the background, and the ferries about to take people to Calais. I thought that would be a fitting scene, but the weather's just started to ship it in. It's really windy, so I sought the shelter of this protected little area in front of these flats. But how would I surmise my time here in Dover? Well, first of all, it's not as rough as yeah, I was led to believe by people before I came. I think maybe that's a vibe that belongs to yesteryear but the issue of the migrant crisis for small boat arrivals it does divide the people in the town much like the issue divides opinion in the United Kingdom in general anyway and it's certainly an issue that needs to be fixed there needs to be some kind of solution because it's unsustainable in the long run and it is not good for the cohesion of our society but I do understand at the same time why people who come from destabilised nations, often as a result of rich Western countries' foreign policies, why they end up on the shores of the more prosperous Western countries. Because myself, if I was from a country that had war or civil unrest or lack of opportunity, then I would seek the best right. opportunities I could for myself and my... Anybody would. If America was down bad and a lot was going on, I would come to the UK or I would go somewhere where it wasn't down bad. Huh? You know what I'm saying? If, if if they was doing America like South Sudan, I would be gone seeking refuge. You feel me? Family. So it's inevitable that these people take the risks to come to countries, not just like the UK, but there's a migrant crisis on the United States border too. Folks, how would I sum up Dover though? I would say that next time you pass through to catch the ferry, maybe stay a night because it's it's not all that bad. It's got a cute little town centre. It's pretty relaxed. I don't know about that, but I, I'm gonna take your word for it. The high street's struggling, so before you catch that ferry over there to Calais, maybe spend a couple of quid on Dover High Street because there are some really nice, welcoming people, and I've enjoyed my time here. Uh, maybe I'll go get a Dover kebab or something. Man, tell her leave a like, comment. I'm gone.